Less emphasis on technology, you know, even though I have got solar panels on the roof. That's not integral to Passive House, that's something I want to do as an extra. And you can mix and match the Passive House with um, uh, other approaches, so using you know, loan. Uh, on the roof is a living roof, which you'll see upstairs. Okay. Um, so, so this structure is all breathable. So the, what is um, it? What's, it? What's the stuff in inside here? Then? It's called a uh, warm cell. Really pleased, it's very well insulated. You see the thickness on the walls. We've got um, a layer of Celotex insulation and then a layer of Pavitherm, um, some of which the offcuts came from the school at Dartington, which is just down the road. And um, we've used as much reclaimed materials as possible. Yeah, material, aluminium foil, layers of fleece, and others. And you build up this sort of composite there, it's about 10 centimetres thick, and it has a tremendous insulative value. Um, and it's very flexible, a bit like a, a multi sort of stranded blanket. So you can bend it across um, dormers upstairs. You can work in quite an acceptable location. We dismissed heat pumps because I didn't know about water source heat pumps, and it was the solar people that uh, put us on to uh, uh, the, the water source. Um, and you know, then there is this process of, of uh, you know a diviner, and then the water drilling, and so on. It was it, it's complicated. It's not for the faint heart. When you lime wash the wall, traditionally it was the liquid left over when you slaked your lime. So it's, a, it's water with a high lime content. Uh, we recently moved into the area and we used to live in a, an eco house in Nottinghamshire. And we've moved into a, a listed building with quite different challenges for us. And um, so what we're doing today is looking at uh, as many of the um, case studies and things that have been done by people in this area to get more ideas. And in particular, this place at East Allington because it's a it's a, it's, it's old buildings, 16th century, similar to ours, and just to get ideas really, and it's uh, been very useful. So, Joss, this this green roof looks really beautiful. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Well, it's a project I started this spring. Um, and my idea was to get a fairly abundant green roof, um, not to have the usual, say, an inch thick sedum type green roof. So I uh, plan to have a four inch layer of growing medium, and um, this involved creating a timber framework, uh, and this is lined with a pond liner, sandwiched between two layers of carpet, which basically protects the pond liner. And uh, the drainage for the green roof has a gap between this front board and this board is about two centimetres and has the pea gravel infill uh, contained by uh, geotextile so the, basically all the water drains down the front so it's basically a free draining system um, with a four inch layer of soil on top and all of the planting is drought tolerant planting uh, and the idea is that most of it's slow growing needing relatively little maintenance. Well I'm here in the, the garden at the uh, Lower Allerton farmhouse with um, Joss Bennett and uh, I must say Joss this is not what you expect to find in the garden of a 16th century farmhouse. No, no it's a bit uh, high tech really isn't it? Uh, but the, I suppose the beauty of this kind of arrangement is that you're just kind of two for one really, you get the, the solar panel array which because it's freestanding you can actually uh, orientate it perfectly to the sun and get exactly the right angle but also you have a free space underneath for storage so we've actually clad, it started to clad in timber so we'll actually have a storage shed as well for only for the bargain. 